Good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to welcome you back in another episode of Candid with Quest. Coming off from the height of the recently concluded PBA 2020 bubble that happened in Quest Plus Conference Center, Clark, we continually recognize our property is fast becoming a must visit and must experience for any sport enthusiast. With the highly commendable experience of the PBA player in Clark and the available leisure and sport activity around the hotel, it is easy to be a top destination of choice for travelers looking to enjoy their respective sport, such as biking, running, and so much more. Today is my privilege to open this episode when we will hear more about one of the top sports you can experience here in Clark, the competitive but the very relaxing sport of golf. To golf enthusiasts and to lovers of the sport, our esteemed guests, we will talk about the future of golf in the Philippines. We hope to hear bigger and better things for golf this 2021. As for the beginners of those curious about this sport, we hope this discussion convinces you to dip your toes into the sport and try it out soon here at Mimosa Plus Golf Course. So now, let's all sit back and watch at Mimosa Plus Golf Course, Director of Golf, David Ross, and Quest Plus Clark, Director of Sales and Marketing, Judy Samiento, talk to the guests who truly know the sport. Enjoy. Well, thank you, GM Michael. Uh, welcome, everyone, to a new episode of Candid with Quest, swinging into 2021. I'm David Ross, Director of Golf at Mimosa Plus Golf Course, and I'm delighted to be joined here um, by Quest Plus Clark and Mimosa Plus Golf's uh, Director of Sales and Marketing, Miss Judy Sarmiento. Uh, hi, Judy. Hi, David. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we discuss anything and everything about golf with our special guest. So to start off, let's introduce them. David? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Um, our first, first guest uh, is uh, CEO of the Asian Golf Industry uh, Federation, Mr. Mike Lynch. Um, maybe you'd like to say something very quickly about uh, yourself, uh, Eric? Certainly, David, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be invited to speak uh, at this event. Um, the Asian Golf Industry Federation is a non-for-profit membership body in existence around 10 years. Uh, we focus on improving the industry through education and intelligence amongst the turf grass and club management community. Uh, we have the great pleasure of coming to the Philippines uh, at least once a year uh, when uh, we are able to travel and uh, work with the National Golf uh, courses of Philippines, uh, NGAP, as well as the Sports Commission of Philippines to run education events uh, in, the, uh, in the Philippines. And we hope to be back uh, as soon as possible. So thanks once again and look forward to participating Thank today. Thanks, Eric. Um, uh, our next guest is the president of Green Dynasty, uh, a construction management company based in Singapore, uh, Mr. Owen Hester. Uh, who also is uh, our project manager for the, the renovation of our golf course here right now. Yeah, thank you, David, for the invitation. I'm very proud to, uh, to join this distinguished group for a discussion today. Uh, as you said, we're a construction management company that operates through Southeast Asia and, and now venturing into the Middle East. Uh, we've had a long association with, uh, with Quest through, through Mimosa Golf Club and, and prior to... Uh, Prior to the COVID restrictions, I, I could just about say Quest was my second home, nearly spending probably once a week, every second week uh, in the Philippines, enjoying some wonderful hospitality on a on a great project. And hopefully, when uh, restrictions lift, I certainly look forward to uh, to getting back over there again. Okay, thank you, Owen. We hope to see you soon here in Clark. Thank you. Okay, for our next guest is a seasoned sports journalist and the golf editor of the Business Mirror, Mr. Mike Bessa. Hi, Mike. You're on mute, Mike. Okay, there you are. Hello. Hi. Uh, I am late of the Business Mirror. Uh, now I am, I serve as the director of marketing for the new Puerto Azul Golf and Country Club. Uh, wow. That's where I am right now. I'm on the grounds right now, so. Pleased to meet you all. Thank you, thank you. Our next um, guest, 
to round it all off, an avid golfer of Mimosa Plus Golf also, and he's representing one of our partners here in Mimosa, the Empire Golf, Mr. Roel Villa. Hi, Roel. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, as everyone mentioned, uh, I'm honored to be part of this uh, group. I, uh, I work for Dynamic Sports Corporation. We are the uh, distributors in the Philippines of uh, Titleist and Fujoy. And we also run and manage uh, Empire Golf Store. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, we're, we're partnered with uh, Mimosa in, in the pro shop. They are the course. All right, David? Uh, great. Um, well, welcome, everyone. Uh, great to be talking to you all here today. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, so now let's start. Um, let's get to know our guests a little bit more um, and their significant contributions to the sport. So let's start with you, Eric. Um, tell us about a little bit about the Golf Industry uh, Federation and your role uh, within this federation. Sure, David. Um, as noted before, we're a uh, non-for-profit member body uh, dedicated to uh, building the industry. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we have a, a very active membership and a very active board. In fact, Owen is a board member of the AJF along with 11 other individuals who are, represent a cross-section of the industry from construction to uh, mowers, suppliers on the industry side to Mimosa as a, a facility member, uh, for instance, and also other individuals. So we work as a clearinghouse of information and education. And as I said before, we really, really focus on education. We believe that a better qualified uh, superintendent makes a better golf course, a better qualified general manager makes a better operated golf course as well. And as such, uh, a more profitable industry. So we focus on, um, you know, we uh, let the other organizations focus on building the actual players, but we believe that the facilities themselves behind that and day-to-day -day play is as important as uh, building professional or amateur golf. So that's really our role. I've been with uh, the AGI for about six years. I've been in Asia for 30 years, 20 years in media. Uh, but the last uh, uh, last 10 in golf with the Asian Tour for a few years as well on the commercial side, but happy to be the CEO of uh, the Asian Golf Industry Federation. And uh, it's a real pleasure to, uh, to be in the industry. Thanks very much, Eric. Um, that's, that's great. And I know you're doing a great job and we're very proud to be, to, to be a, a member and, and supporting and contributing to, to the growth of uh, golf. Thank you, David. And Asia. Um, Owen, uh, you've been uh, here uh, to Mimosa Plus uh, uh, quite a lot, and you've been overseeing the developments of the golf course. What can you say about the golf industry here in the Philippines compared to, say, let's say, I don't know, 10 years ago? How, how much do you think it's progressed? Um, David, I think that the golf in the Philippines is not too dissimilar, actually, to a lot of Southeast Asian countries where there was, there was a mass development of golf in the in the mid 90s and a lot of these projects are really at that 25 to 30 year old age bracket and we really see now there's there's becoming two levels um not just in the philippines but everywhere where a lot of courses are at the stage of needing uh major redevelopment works just like a hotel after a set period of time you have to refurbish it and it same and the same goes with golf courses um but the, the difference is we're seeing a very very good local market of talent now and and not just in the um in the agronomy side of things but also from from outside from building and we've actually been able to meet a lot of very good philippine professionals that we are now trying to um both for overseas work and on, on projects overseas. So it's, it's becoming a very mature market. Great. Uh, Roel, I've got a question for you here. Um, yep. As a significant part of the golf community here in the country, how do you think we can further promote this sport that we love, uh, especially to sport loving Filipinos and the future generations of golfers in this country? Um, well, there are so many challenges at this time, uh, David, uh, given, given the current situation we're in. Um, because, uh, you know, if you want to develop the, the market, uh, we want to start with the young ones. Uh, 
apparently uh, the government has has uh, disallowed um, players below 18 or 15, I, I may say, uh, from playing. And these are the ones that we want to to really grow uh, because this is the future of golf uh, and for the industry. But in terms of promoting, uh, uh, going back to your question, um, we we go to different courses to promote the product. Uh, we conduct um, uh, trials, uh, fitting sessions, and and some educations on on the products, uh, just so that we can educate uh, the golfers. Because uh, not not too many golfers know, uh, you know, specific. Um, matters uh, about equipment, uh, the clubs, even the golf balls. So and that's, that's what we want to do, to educate them on, on what it can benefit them uh, in the long run. Right. Yeah, thanks very much, um, Royal. Uh, obviously, yes, I mean, uh, attacking the grassroots and starting with the young ones. I mean, the young ones are the future golfers, the future uh, members and players of the country. And, and obviously, we, we, you know, we'd like to see more and more uh, players breaking into the, into the professional um, uh, world. Uh, Mike, um, as a sports journalist, you've been following the golf uh, world very, very closely. Uh, and in the past year, we've seen the uh, uh, insurgence uh, recently of young Filipino go golfers such as Yuka Sasso and Bianca Pangdangan. Uh, what do you think makes these ladies uh, excel uh, in, in, in this sport uh, here in the Philippines? Well, I've had the f good fortune to follow both Bianca and Yuka since they were juniors. And among our, the, their generation, their batch in junior golf, they really were the, uh, the cream of the crop. They were the most talented. And uh, they had parents that understood that and gave them the space for them to grow as as golfers, I think you can't you can't over uh, overestimate the importance of something like that. Allowing allowing the the juniors space for them to grow and mature as golfers. Um, being a sports dad or a sports parent isn't the best thing, especially with golf, because it takes up a lot of time. Number one, it takes them away from their peer group, right? So. Uh, it's it's a delicate balance of instilling the discipline in them for them to learn the sport and yet allowing them the space to grow as individuals now uh, our issue here now as in, as a country as a sporting nation is that there seems to be a quite a gap between the two of them and the next potential star um, since we don't have a very extensive program, uh, the number of juniors in the game to date has been really quite small. And uh, so there, there's a little bit of a gap now between Bianca and Yuka and the next really promising golfing star. Uh, you have a couple of girls that, are, that show promise. Rian Maliksi is one. But uh, whether she has that the potential of Bianca and Yuka, that still remains to be seen. And Bianca and Yuka were very talented in the, in, the, in the aspect that they both hit the ball very far. And with the courses growing in length, uh, distance off the tee, and with the, with the, with the irons, it has become a premium for any aspiring golfer. So that's where they were really most talented. Now, there are others that might be coming up, but you know, still too early to, to say whether they will rise to the level of Bianca or Yuka. Great. Uh, thanks very much, Mike. Um, yeah, let, let's hope that uh, Bianca and Yuka uh, uh, can inspire the future generations of golfers that come through. Um, actually, I, I read somewhere that Bianca was actually the longest, uh, longest driver on, on, on the LPGA Tour. Yes, she is the distance leader. Uh, and she's only just started. Yeah, and she's, she, she still retains her rookie, season, her, her rookie status this right. coming year. Right. So, yeah, she's, uh, she's got a full year ahead of her. So I'm, I'm optimistic that she'll do well. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, 
Do you think that uh, uh, golf will overtake uh, uh, the Filipino um, fascination for basketball? Oh, I think that's really a long shot. Uh, you have generations that were weaned on basketball, so I think it's a lot to ask. But the one thing that I will note is that the game has grown significantly during the pandemic or in spite of the pandemic. Uh, a big reason for that is there aren't many activities that people can engage in these days. And golf is one of the safest since you're out, you're out in the open, under the sun, in, in the elements. And it's very difficult for, for COVID to spread in this environment. Uh, you also have people that can't travel anymore. So these people are instead traveling locally to different golf courses, playing more golf, buying more golf equipment. Uh, so in that in that regard, the pandemic has actually been good for golf. Okay. Now, I understand that other countries like Malaysia now is back in lockdown. And uh, there are parts of the United States, California in particular, that are, have locked down again because of the... The surge, the surge of the virus in those areas. But for the most part, golf is still one of the safest activities in which you can engage, uh, given this, you know, given the pandemic and the virus. So I think if, if, golf, if the game plays its cards right, this is a really good opportunity for us to grow the game. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's really interesting, uh, Mike. I mean, you know, obviously, it, it, last year was a was a, a, a bombshell that fell on all of us. Um, um, Owen actually is in is in quarantine in Vietnam. He's he's doing his fourteen uh, day quarantine. So, you know, we're, we've all been affected in, in in some way. But it's interesting that you say, Mike, that um, you know this is a great opportunity to actually flourish the game because it is one of the sports which is probably one of the safest ones uh, where yes. you know. Um, Players can go out there. They can they can social distance, but they can still love the game. Um, that's that's, uh, that's 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 amazing. I'm really really pleased that you actually said that, um, Eric. Um, you you work with lots of uh, industry leaders. Um, uh, uh, what what is the new normal for golf? Can you give some of that some examples? Well, well, to echo what Mike is saying, and and also I spoke with Roel before we got on about you know participation. I think it's not only Philippines, but globally that golf participation is increased due to the pandemic because of various different factors. Um, whether in the AGIF, we're looking to do some, um, some participation surveys uh, later this year across Southeast Asia. We'd love to include the Philippines to see what data provides on the increase of participation. The key metric here, as, as noted by Mike, is, is, is it new golfers, people coming out as a new player or is it just uh, people who are recycling because they're um, not able to, uh, to travel? And if it is the former, which uh, we believe, and this is not only just in Asia, you see the data coming from the UK through the RNA's research there in the United States. If it is new golfer, new players, uh, golf avids who are just coming out, then we do have a tremendous opportunity. And, and the challenge is how do we retain that new golfer once things go back to normal? And there is a tremendous opportunity. As far as the new normal, then there's the economics of golf. Uh, and, and I'm just commenting about Southeast Asia, and, and it's tough to generalize. But you do have uh, some bands of economic uh, situation for various different types of clubs. If you're in a, a private members club right now, you're probably doing okay because your members are just playing uh, you know, a lot and you have good cash reserves and, and things are okay. You might be suffering a little bit from food and beverage and a few other things, but in general, uh, you're doing okay. If you're a semi-private club, you might be suffering depending where you are because people simply can't travel as much. And here in Singapore, you have restrictions on guest play. For instance, you can't bring a guest anymore, so that has some impact. Um, for the tourism-reliant courses, of course, it's a big, it's a big blow. Uh, because you know those who are relying upon uh, a large, significant uh, part of their revenue for tourism, it's it's a it's a little bit of a wake up call. Um, so within that context, we're working with several of the uh, tourism bodies to to plan for the future, right? To see where they can plan their future marketing dollars because people will return, uh, and it, it'll be good to know where they're coming from. 
but it is, I think it's a challenge for a certain segment of, of golf courses that we're looking to region, but opportunity is, is still there. And in general, I think the, the increase in golf participation is a favorable silver lining to uh, the situation. That's great, Eric. Um, well, I, I read, read somewhere that uh, uh, in, in Thailand, for example, they, they will accept tourists um, and they can actually do their 14 day quarantine at golf course, at golf clubs. Yeah, I'd heard about that. We, we put that up uh, as well as far as an initiative that you can quarantine on the golf course. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. You, uh, you, if you want to play the same golf course the whole time and yeah, I mean, there's very different ways you can do about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd rather play golf for 14 days in the, to the room. <laughs> Pardon me? Sorry, I'd rather play golf for 14 days on the same golf course than sit in a hotel room. That's true. There we are. If you had an option available for you in Vietnam, I'm sure you'd be taking it up. <laughs> That's a good idea. We should do that, David, for a quest and Mimosa Golf. I yeah, totally so agree. Right? I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, next month I, I just. <laughs> Yeah, for, for I think this is for Owen. Um, of course, the hotel and Mimosa Plus Golf, we would like to encourage safe travel experience for our neighboring countries by promoting Clark and Philippines as a top destination for sports tourism. Mm -hmm. This will not only help the hospitality and tourism industry, but can also gradually be of help to the local community and to the business owners, right? So in relation to this, what do you think the golf courses here in the Philippines need to improve further on? to tap the global market and what makes Philippines a viable golf destination? Look, I, I think Philippines has a great advantage that the people are so friendly and so nice and so welcoming. It, it just comes back to facilities now that uh, there's, there's some great facility, facilities in the Philippines, but people are looking for quality and looking for speed and looking for efficiency. And, and that all comes with change and with time. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a, just going through that process of really upgrading and, and providing a very efficient service now. And, and uh, with the new regulations for travel, you, you've just got to make sure that that exposure to, to fellow golfers or to staff is, is controlled and uh, done in a very efficient manner. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, efficiency and, and, and simplicity and ease of booking. Um, yeah. Here at uh, Mimosa Plus Golf, um, we, we've, we've joined the modern age and we're obviously upgrading our golf course with the, with the help of you. Uh, but we've also uh, developed our own uh, app, a booking app, where players can, can book a tee time with just, with just their phone. Uh, they can download the app on, on, on the Google Play and, uh, and the App Store. Um, we've also um, invested in 115 uh, club car golf carts with a with GPS system. Um, uh, uh, which is the first for the Philippines. And so players are, are able to actually order their food via the GPS. They can see the distances. Uh, they can see the, the actual golf holes. Um, you can see publicity on there as well. Um, so, so, so that's some of the things that we're doing to uh, make things a little bit more streamlined here, here at uh, Mimosa. Um, we've also, with the, with the renovation, um, we've uh, brought this uh, uh, Zoysia Trinity grass from 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 uh, Thailand, uh, which actually arrived yesterday for for our second second nine holes, uh, which is a grass which requires less fertilizer, less chemicals, less water. Um, we invested in a, in in a in a rainbird irrigation system, which which helps us uh, save water. So we're we're, we're becoming more uh, sustainable, uh, and uh, which which is really important too because you know. You, you can't you can't go throwing away water you can't you, you, it, it's just not possible anymore um, so we're, we're doing a lot to, 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 to improve uh, golf for for our players uh, and at the same time become a more sustainable um, and uh, have our golfers come through playing you know four hours 15 minutes and and, and then go out and do their stuff um, so that's some of the stuff that we're doing um, so some of you guys have played here. Um, what do you think sets Mimosa Golf, uh, Mimosa Plus Golf Course, uh, apart from other golf courses? Mike, do you, you, you've played here? Yes, I have. I'm, I'm quite familiar with both golf courses. I think what sets you guys apart is access, really. Um, the country's problem as a whole, you know, viewed in the context of tourism, is that most of our great courses are all private. 
So access is an issue. Uh, I know uh, I know several outfits that have tried to penetrate the market, but the difficulty is negotiating with each golf course because each golf course is going to have their own set of regulations for, to allow guests, their own set of policies. And it's difficult, you know, if, if I was a... If I was a travel agent, a booking agent, I would want a uniform arrangement between all of the clubs that I'm dealing with. So it's one arrangement. I talk to you. I talk to your course. You've got, we've got this deal set up, and I'm going to take that same deal and offer it to every golf course that I, that, uh, I, I need access to. Right? That's unfortunately not possible here because every golf course is a different set of board of directors. Every club has uh, different rules on the amount of access they give to, to guests. So that, that I think, is, is what's really holding golf tourism in the country back. But that's your opportunity because you have no such, no such issues. Um, and this is the same thing that we're looking at here at Puerto Azul, is we're going to treat our course as a, an upscale public. So access is not going to be an issue. Right. Um, Agree. My owners Agree also my don't want. Huh? My owners Agree. also Agree. don't want the. Uh, also, don't want to report to a board of directors. You know, they prefer to make the decisions expediently when they need to, and without having to go through a board. So that works in our favor, also as it does with yours. Okay, you you mentioned access. Actually, what I have in mind is is actually the accessibility of Clark now. To the Manila golfers, because um, a friend just mentioned to me that the Skyway is also open yes. already. Yes. So a travel that's from three to four hours is now only one hour going to Clark. Yeah. Right. So so I Correct. think that's another um thing to that's highlight huge, here for huge those. Plus, yes. Yes. Huge yes. Have plus. you tried it already? No, not yet. I've been quite busy here at Puerto Azul. So, but yeah, I've I've been meaning to travel north. Uh, mm -hmm. My owners are developing another property somewhere in Banban, Tarlac. So we'll, I should be in your neck of the woods pretty soon. Yes, yes. Even, even internationally, Judy, it's, it's great that it's 15 minutes. Sorry, it's only five minutes from the airport to uh, Mimosa. Yeah. Uh, easy access, oh, yeah. easy, easy airport to get through, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. great accommodation and food and beverage outlets around there as well makes it a quite appealing place to go and play golf and, and be based strong. Yes, and, and you're not wanting in facilities. You have casinos, you have uh, numerous restaurants, night spots. There's lots to do in that area. Mm. Just to add on the tourism angle, I mean, I completely agree with Owen and, and everybody about the, the hospitality mm -hmm. of the Filipino people and, and the, the various different assets that you have. Just on an overall observation, there's been uh, several studies done on what uh, is the most important aspect for a traveling golfer. And uh, consistently, and we've done, it's been done in the United States, but we've also done some work here in Southeast Asia with a few tour operators to survey their traveling golfers. And the number one most important aspect for their traveling golfing experience is not price, is not locker rooms, is not food, it's not, uh, you know, other aspects, it is the condition of the golf course specifically. So when somebody travels from Korea or they travel overseas or even from Manila to come someplace, they will pay for a, a course in good conditions. And uh, design is important as well. And certainly the club management is very important as an overlay, but the condition of the course is number one. And that's why we really focus on on um, um, working with the owners and, and Mike's alluded to various owners and, and, and committees, et cetera, to really prioritize uh, the, uh, the core asset most golf facilities have, and that's the golf course itself. So, our two cents from the AGIF. <laughs> no, I agree, Gary. I agree. That's, that's uh, the sentiment that I've, I've uh, received also speaking to people. So I'm totally in agreement with you there. Maybe, maybe, um, might we should do, we should do some kind of reciprocal arrangement uh, with your players and our players, uh, and uh, sure. I, I think also it's important that you know we all we all, especially right now where we're, 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 we're obviously we're, we're seeing a, a, a decrease in the, in the amount of golf that we're seeing, um, but if we if we all join together forces, you know, it, it could be you know 
we could create uh, an interest for, for 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 the local market, you know, to come up, you know, for a weekend or or, or um, play one golf course and then play another one, and 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 div- diversify and uh, and become stronger. No. Um, so I think you know I think that uh, the Clark area is going to supplant Cavite as the next center of golf in the country because you have you have courses that are easily accessible to the public. Uh, Luisita is, ex- is open to the public by special arrangement. You're open. Uh, Fontana is open. Subic, Subic is basically open. And these are good golf courses. Good mm-hmm. golf courses in pretty good condition. So, and then combine that with the infrastructure that's already there in place. I think, uh, I think it's a no-brainer. You've got an airport. You've got a port. You know, you've got beaches in that area. Everything that that uh, that a traveler to the Philippines is looking for is in is in your area. So, I think that could that's be the next golf hotspot. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that's Some, true. That, it's really becoming. Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Well, Judy, I was going to say, you know, talking to other industry personnel, we we all think too that um, as as countries open up and come out of this COVID period. A lot of golfers are not going to travel long distances anymore until everything is settled down, and that could take years. So the amount of golfers who are, say, Korean, for instance, who are they're not going to travel to the US or travel to Europe. They're going to stay regionally where they can get in, they can get out, because because borders are going to change very quickly. And nobody wants to travel halfway around the world and get stuck. Sure. So we think it's a, a great opportunity for, for the Philippines and especially Clark area to, to take advantage of that. That you know more than two or three hours from uh, from the majority of, uh, of golfers in, in, in the Asian region and uh, you have everything in place to cope with it. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. Clark really is becoming, you know, the sports tourism destination. So we've had PPA also, the Philippine Basketball Association, who stayed in, in Clark and the Quest Hotel for their bubble, um, just like just last conference. And then we should be having FIBA also soon. This is February at Clark also and staying at Quest. So then golf definitely would be one of the sports that's developing inside Clark. Anyways, um, we hope to see you here, guys, at Mimosa Plus Golf. We hope more Filipinos will discover the beauty of the sports and stay to learn it as well, right? To end this, any advice for Filipino out there who would like to start learning golf? What should be? What should they do first, and what? How should they pursue it? Uh well, you know, I I run one of the country's largest Facebook groups, Facebook golf groups. We've got pretty close to 9,000 members already in my site, Pinoy Golfer. And mm-hmm. our members are very helpful. Okay. And I can connect you to teaching pros in various areas. So that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Uh, I would say plug into a network, you know, a, 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 an extensive golfing network, and then lean on the, the support that you'll get from other golfers. You know, I, I think Filipino golfers in particular are very supportive of other people, of other golfers that want to get in the game. We we all want we all love this game and we want to help grow it. Yeah, it's so a gentleman's it's game. Plugging into our network it, right? is, is yeah. yeah, is a good start. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can invite them to go to Mimosa tomorrow. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> want to learn. Well, you got your demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's true. So self promotion there, uh, Royal. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, as I follow through to what Mike was saying, um, mm-hmm. yeah, their 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 group is very supportive, and you, you get a lot of information. Um, members sharing their experiences in other golf courses, uh, new equipment, and you know what have you. And yeah, that's a way to learn. Uh, aside from from going to um, to learn from a good coach. Um, it's also good to learn from others, uh, and yeah, everyone's yeah, very supportive. Support. When you're coming up, you need support more than anything. You need people to encourage you to stay in the game, especially in a game like golf, which is so, which can be so uh, frustrating at times. You know? So uh, the support that that our group lends to other golfers 
I think is invaluable. Fantastic. I, I, I look forward to, to, to the future. Um, I look forward to, to, to working with you guys. Uh, I'm very, very, very pleased to meet you, Mike. Um, uh, I look forward to, to, to playing playing around a golf uh, here at Mimosa. Oh, I'd like that. Yeah, any, any time. Um, so uh, it's been a great conversation. Uh, I'd like you. I'd like to thank uh, Eric, Owen, Roel, and Mike to, to, for for being with us. Um, and uh, this uh, this uh, this golfing episode of uh, of Candid with Quest. Uh, thanks for joining uh, myself and Judy uh, today. And uh, I think we did pretty well, Judy. Right. That's true. That's true. Thank you so much, Eric, Ruel, Owen, and Mike. It the, the time is so short to actually talk about these things. There's there's a lot of interesting things that we need to talk more. But for now, it is my pleasure to, to have all of you. We hope to see our viewers soon and let me get this chance to invite all of you to experience golf at Mimosa Plus Golf Course. For more information, please download the Mimosa Plus Golf app, now available at Google Play and also at the Apple App Store. While you are here, experience nature and our signature Filipino hospitality at Quest Plus Conference Center Clark also. Visit www.questhotelsandresorts.com slash Clark to book your future staycation. All right? Thanks for inviting us, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. So, Thank before you. End, so before we end, uh, in, I just have a little video here that I'd like to, like to, like to show you. Uh, thanks. Thanks for watching. Can with the quest. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.